If you're building an application to manage schedules on Bubble, there are three different development complications you must watch out for. In this video, we're walking through Calendly, which is a scheduling and availability tool for individuals and teams. This is a type of app with features that can apply to many industries, and we're constantly seeing this being built on Bubble. It's also one we see a lot of people running into a particular set of development issues, which can cause performance and scale complications down the road, and really just a lot of frustration during development. So if this is the type of app or functionality that you're building, keep watching so you can avoid these complications in your own development. It's Gabby at Coaching No Code Apps, where we help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps to start or grow their businesses, all without coding. Calendly offers appointment scheduling for individuals and teams with features such as embeddable calendars, share links, custom booking workflows, various integrations, and more. There are tons of apps that offer a combination of these features like Acuity Scheduling, Set More, and even Google and Microsoft have their own spin on managing scheduled events within their Google Calendar and Outlook Calendar products. Schedule managers are great for coaches, consultants, team meetings, freelancers, sales, recruiting, and so much more. Because this type of app involves features that can apply to so many other use cases, we're going to tear it down to three of the most common issues we see coming out of developing an app like this. We're gonna start with availability rules. Developing a system to manage availability rules in a scheduling app usually requires a few moving parts. When you're giving users the ability to define when they're available, you have to take into account the days of the week, the time of day, time zones, time between appointments, recurring availability versus one-time instances. There's a lot of logic that goes into building calendar systems, right? Not to mention displaying all of this information and offering these preferences in a way that's intuitive for your users. Some of the most common pitfalls we see when it comes to creating availability rules in a scheduling app typically involve forgetting about all of these nuances. If you exclude buffer times between appointments, then you run the risk of back-to-back -back meetings with no breathing room for breaks or meetings that might go a little long. If you're not indicating time zones for multi-location meetings, then you end up with people showing up at the wrong time. And while it would be easy to have a predictable schedule and set up the same availability for every day or week, that's just not the reality of how most people's schedules go. You have to allow for time off, vacations, special events, and other one-off changes so that availability is accurate. Without incorporating these important pieces of logic, you greatly risk having an app that's less flexible for the majority of use cases, that forces users to make compromises in how they manage their schedule and leads to more cancellations and rescheduled events, which no one wants. These are the consequences that will ultimately drive users away from your app. Now, it's easy to overdo it with the amount of customizations you build into availability rules within your scheduling app, but start simple. Build out your logic with basic functionality first, such as a daily rule that is the same every week. Make sure that baseline works well, then incorporate conditions to those rules. Layer those important considerations into your logic piece by piece to make your development easier and more stable. Before you know it, you'll have a robust feature in your scheduling app. By the way, if you're wanting to build an app like this, we help entrepreneurs go from idea to pilot launch in our private client program. If you want to see whether you and your app would be a fit for that too, apply for a free strategy call over at coachingnocodeapps.com slash call. Let's move to managing multiple resources in your scheduling app. Scheduling managers are fantastic for teams and organizations to get synced up for meetings. We're all familiar with the headaches of proposing times to meet that result in a tedious back and forth of emails and chat messages, sorting out conflicts and negotiating or compromising on the best time for everyone involved. The more people involved, the more challenging it can get too. This is where having a resource manager in your scheduling app can help get everybody on the same page. Easily compare everyone's availability and have the app find the best time instantly. Now, resource doesn't have to apply to team members only. It can also be a space you book within a building like a co-working desk or conference room or an event space. Or it can be a rental from an inventory like a car or a kayak or film equipment. The common thread here for managing resources is that the schedule should be able to offer what's available on a given day or a range of days for a period of time. These bookings or rentals can also overlap one another if there's enough resources to go around. Naturally, there's a lot of logic that goes into functionality like this as well. And the primary pitfalls we see here is a lack of conflict checking. It's easy to build the perfect scenario where there's an infinite availability, but what happens when a party doesn't clear the event space in time or when a rental is overdue? 
What about the buffer time between bookings? Have you given your users a way to indicate how much turnaround time they need to make the resource available again? What kind of actual safeguards do you have in place to prevent conflicts? How much control will you give your users to make these preferences customizable and suit their needs? The more niche your scheduling app is, the more focused those preferences should be. For example, if you're in the events industry, you might want to incorporate setup and breakdown buffers between bookings. The consequences of not thinking through, let alone implementing proper resource management logic, all comes down to a mess of conflicting bookings. You might end up with double or overbooked time slots and miscommunication between the team and their customers or clients. And if you don't design it in a way that's super intuitive to configure as a team member and schedule as a client, you'll end up with an app that just doesn't work. Scheduling apps have a lot of room for customization and managing multiple resources is one area where you can get really creative to support your use case. Just make sure you're addressing the top needs in an intuitive and well-tested way. Now, we can't talk about scheduling managers without talking about integrations. A scheduling manager is expected to have integrations of some kind for ease of use within an individual or team's normal workflows. Whether it's a connection to other popular calendar systems like Google Calendar, uh, an embedded widget on a website, or interactive elements in an email template. A scheduling tool is typically a part of a larger system. So where are we seeing people go astray in the development of these features? Well, we're seeing a lot of overcomplication. Don't get shiny object syndrome. Just because you can does not mean that you should. We've seen scheduling apps getting built with way too many ways to book a time slot, all with different designs and flows, far too many third-party dependencies to generate a calendar, route users to external forms, embed video calls or documents to sign, and the list goes on. Diving into too much too soon can lead to a disjointed experience, not to mention an app that's hard to develop. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't build a feature-rich scheduling tool. In fact, Calendly is a popular and robust solution that does offer a ton of integration options, but you have to be strategic with which integrations are actually appropriate for your app. Know your market, build it in layers, put it out there in strategic phases and get feedback. Become smarter for the next iteration. Learn what works and what doesn't and then implement adjustments from there. All right, from here, you should have a good idea of how to better navigate your development. If you want to go vastly deeper though, schedule a strategy call to sit down and chat with us. We'll help you put together a custom roadmap for your app's development. Then see whether you and your app might be a fit to join our private client program where we help entrepreneurs go from idea to pilot launch. To talk more, head to coachingnocodeapps.com slash call. All right, I hope this was helpful and we'll see you in the next one.